So what is the Fintinet? Siddharth has been talking about this for years. I think he told me first about this two years ago or three years ago. What is the Fintinet and why is it so interesting as a evolution of whatever we have today? Well, in some sense, Fintinet brings together the the traditional, the mainstream financial system that we have and marries it to the possibilities that cryptographic techniques have taught us. You know, the concept of uh, blockchains, the fact that everything is on one, you know, uh, chain, uh, immutability of data and so on. So there, there, there are very, some very powerful ideas that the cryptography has brought in. What is Fintinet? What is cryptography? Cryptography is, you know, the, the fact that you used uh, uh, all this uh, technology to m- make things immutable. In the sense you can, if you, create, if you look at a blockchain, everybody can see the same thing. And every change made is also visible to everybody. So it's a, it gives you the tools to create, instead of having a reconciliation between you all of us, that act as a public reconciliation of whatever it is, some transactions. So that's what is used by the cryptocurrency guys. So let's separate cryptography or crypto technology from cryptocurrency. Hmm. So that capability of immutability of creating chains was used to create Bitcoin and Ether and all these things. Basically, everybody can see and verify the transactions. Yeah, that are. without any, in the old world, or in the current traditional world, you know, there's a custodian, there's a settlement guy, there's a regulator, all they, they the, the crypto cryptocurrency guys came from this saying that we don't need authority. So when it, if you don't have authority, how do you resolve things? We'll use software to resolve it. I mean, that's the broad, broad theory, right? So, but there's a lot of good, very technology there, but that has gone to its own issues because when you start building financial system that are not part of authority, Mm -hmm. then you end up with all the, uh, you know, costs of that, you know, money laundering and terrorist financing and all that stuff. And we saw what happened to many of these crypto guys. Can't that be scammed? Like whenever I looked at the crypto world, if I were to think regulation is everybody viewing transactions verified either by proof of work or proof of stake or even proof of time. Uh, if the chain in itself is not large enough, can't it be easy, easily uh, scammed or conned into going in a certain direction? I, I don't know enough to answer that. But they took a technology, but on top of that, they layered currency and they layered ideology. Hmm. So they said, we'll create our own currency. Mm-hmm. And they create some 15,000 currency. Everybody creates some coins, mm. ICOs and all that. Mm-hmm. And they said, we don't want authority. We, we don't trust the state. So we'll do it through software. So that got them into all their issues. So what we have done is we said, look, we should separate all this. There's some great technology here, which we can use for high volume, low cost transactions. And if we can somehow bring that high volume, low cost transaction capability to the current world by a common way of doing it, then suddenly we can take our mainstream world and turbocharge it. That's exactly what Fintanet does. So Fintanet allows you to essentially airdrop like a modern engine into the existing system. Hmm. Which is interoperable. Which is interoperable. So... If it's in the banking system, then I can take a bank deposit and following certain rules, I can tokenize it. Mm. And then I can trade the tokens like very fast. Mm. And then when I want the deposit back, I can unconvert it back to a deposit. Mm. So the ability to take different kinds of assets, convert Mm. them to tokens, then use a high speed engine to transact and then untokenize them at the end Mm. is a common thing, whether it's a bond or a stock or a whatever. Mm. So that ability in a nutshell is what the internet does. It, it's an architecture to do that. Right. And when it's implemented, if it's implemented, what will be the first use cases of it? That depends. I mean, uh, if it's in capital markets, mm. uh, it could be, uh, you know, a new types of ETFs. Right. You know, which, which allow you to do, uh, which allow you to create consumer products 
Mm. which are different bundles of things, but you can trade them very fast. Mm. Within banking, it could be tokenized deposits. It could be uh, enabling uh, private assets to be, you know, collateralized. I mean, we don't know exactly where this will go because we have given a, a framework mm -hmm. and uh, different sectors and different countries and different entrepreneurs and different regulators will identify different use cases. The, the interesting thing is this goes back to our thinking that if you unlock something, mm -hmm. then innovation will flourish because you have defined the rules of the game. So that's what we are doing.